Exodus chapter 13. Appreciate the sweet presence of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Begin reading verse 21. Just going to read a couple verses. The Bible says, And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way. By night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for your sweet presence. Lord, thank you for what you've already done in the service, both seen and unseen. Lord, before church, we ask that you'd meet with us, and God, you've heard and answered that. Amen. And God, we certainly do appreciate it. Now, we pray for the preaching of the Word of God. Help me to say what you would have me to say, and God, uh, don't allow me to say anything that would be contrary to the Word or will of God. But God, I pray for your people. Amen. Lord, we live in a wicked world, as you know. God, your people get beat up on so much, and Lord, I do pray that, Lord, today you'd edify them, you'd encourage them, you'd do something in their heart that would propel them through the obstacles they may face even this very day. God, I pray you'd use your people to be a light to this lost world. God, I pray we'd be transformed into your likeness that they might see Christ in us. Now, Father, we are thankful, Lord, for the moving of the Holy Spirit. We're thankful for, for the good testimonies. Lord, thank you for the folks that testified that you've saved them. And God, thank you, Father, for the work you've done in people's lives. And Lord, thank you for protecting Brother James Toey. And just thank you for being a good God. Now, Lord, use this unworthy vessel touch hearts. Certainly, God, if there's anybody here today that's lost, I pray that today would be the day of their salvation. And God, I pray that, Lord, you would certainly have your will and way. And Lord, we'll not fail to bless you and praise you for what you do. I pray for Brother Sidney now. I pray you touch that man of God. You know what is needed. And God, we're asking for the great hand of God, the great physician to touch him. I pray for Brother Bobby as well. You touch him. Be with Miss Heather, you know her need. God, others that are sick, be with them. Touch Brother Doug, he needs your touch. And touch Brother Thad the same. Help us all this day, we'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I want to draw your attention as a way of introduction to these pillars. Can I say uh, these pillars uh, were there to lead the children of Israel? Uh, we find that in the chapter prior, God uh, did the miraculous thing. He answered 400 years of cries and peril of his people. They'd been in bondage in Egypt, and God uh, sent the 12, uh, 10 plagues and attacked the gods of Egypt, showed that he was the true and living God. Uh, and on the last uh, plague, the plague of the firstborn of Egypt that died, uh, even Pharaoh's son died. Uh, Pharaoh uh, wanted nothing more to do with the uh, Israeli people. He allowed those Jews to leave captivity and bondage, uh, and they left with all the spoils of Egypt. Uh, they're on their journey. They think everything's going to be wonderful. Uh, and here we find uh, uh, the Lord is leading them uh, through these pillars. Uh, can I say you and I, uh, my dear friends, without his leading in our life, uh, we'd certainly land in a ditch. Uh, we'd certainly uh, land in problems. Uh, I'm thankful uh, that he leads us through uh, 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 the person of the Holy Ghost of God. Uh, he leads us through the scriptures. Uh, uh, my dear friends, uh, we serve a God that is able not only to save us, but to sustain us. Uh, and to lead us in the direction he'd have us to go. Uh, we find these pillars led them. Uh, we find that this uh, 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 pillar of cloud led them by day, and then there was a pillar of fire that was a light unto them at night. Uh, can I say our God is able to even change the elements? Do hmm? you know there are portions of scriptures uh, where the sun uh, never set? 
until battle was won. Do you know uh, when Jesus hung on Calvary, it was so hideous uh, that God turned the light out uh, and the sun didn't shine for a span of uh, a few hours. Uh, uh, I'm telling you that God's not limited by time, uh, by space, uh, by the elements. Uh, he is Almighty God. Uh, he is omnipotent. He has all power. Uh, and God uh, gave them a light through a pillar to lead them at night. Uh, and my dear friend, this wasn't a little flashlight. Uh, this wasn't a few lightning bugs on a pole. Uh, uh, this was a light to feed some uh, nearly six million Jews through the wilderness at night. Uh, and I believe uh, God did such a good job. They didn't step on any briars, didn't step on any scorpions, uh, didn't step on any snakes. Uh, why? Because God was in control. We find he led them. We find he was a light at night through these pillars. But we also find that these pillars limited their enemy. In chapter number 14, they find their first obstacle. They come to the Red Sea. Then they start acting like Baptists. They started murmuring and complaining. Started saying they wish they'd never left Egypt. Yeah. Oh yeah, I enjoyed being a slave to, to the Egyptians so much. No, nope. they started uh, uh, whining and crying and complaining. Hmm? Just like we do. Amen. Things don't go our way. Sure. And then they look up and here comes Pharaoh after them. And they think they're going to die. Amen. But God sure. showed up. Look there in four, uh, chapter 14, verse 19. And the angel of God, which, w which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. Uh, and the pillar of cloud went from, behind, uh, b b from before their face and stood behind them. Uh, and it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud of darkness to them. Uh, but it gave light by night to these uh, so that the one came not near the other at, uh, all the night. What a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. He was a pillar uh, that limited their enemy. If you read that correctly, uh, he was such a dark cloud that uh, 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 the uh, uh, Egyptians couldn't see Israel, but he was a light to Israel to lead them. Now that's a pillar. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, that's good. It's so big it's dark on one side and light on the other. He limited their enemy. So I'm interested in these pillars this morning, and I want to preach with God's help within the pillars. Within the pillars. Now my Aunt Lynn's here, her favorite message I ever preached. I preached it 30 years ago, and anytime she gets around me, she wants me to preach on the pillars of the church. But I'm not preaching that message today. You've got to take notes on this message today, all right? I'm preaching on these pillars. Within the pillars. Can I say within the pillars, first of all, you'll find God's presence. Look again at verse 21. It says, And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar. Look with me in chapter 14, verse number 19. And the angel of God went before the camp of Israel. Can I say that the angel of God right there... Uh, Anytime you find the angel of the Lord or the angel of God mentioned in the Old Testament, it is actually referencing uh, the Lord Jesus manifesting himself in the Old Testament. So we find that in chapter number 13 that God led them by the pillar. We find in chapter number 14 the angel of God went from before them to behind them to limit the enemy. Can I say that in these pillars you'll find the presence of God? Uh, uh, can I say in that pillar that's a cloud now when I read that began to read that I got to thinking about uh, these big fluffy white cumulus clouds that's not what it's talking about it's talking about uh, if you've ever been on a dirt road uh, and a car goes speeding down the dirt road and you're behind that car uh, you can't see the car uh, but all the dust coming from the car uh, uh, it makes a cloud that you can't see it uh, my dear friends, uh, uh, this pillar is a pillar of dust or smoke uh, where it shows his presence is there. Uh, you just can't see him. Uh, and my dear friends, this morning, uh, his presence has already been around here. Uh, you just haven't seen him. Uh, hey, within the pillar, uh, 
His presence is made known. Uh, hey, uh, uh, over there when Solomon dedicated the temple, uh, the smoke got so thick, uh, the priest had to leave. Uh, why? He showed up. Uh, his presence was so real. Uh, they couldn't even enter in the temple. Uh, I would to God. Uh, we'd pull up the driveway some Sunday uh, and his presence be so thick uh, we can't even get out of our cars. Uh, we'd have to worship outside because uh, God's in his house. Uh, and within the pillars you'll find uh, his presence. Can I say, I like it when it gets a little foggy. We don't literally see him but we have his presence. Can I say within the pillar you'll find God's person. Again in verse 21, you'll find that it says, The Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them by the way, and by night the pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. Can I say that pillar of fire says something to me about his person? There's one thing to have his presence. It's another thing that he manifests his person. That fire represents his person. That fire represents his holiness. The reason we can't see God and live is because he's holy. And we are not. Can I say, uh, uh, that thing within me, my soul, that he sealed unto the day of redemption, uh, and he sealed it... Uh, uh, after he forgave me of all sin, uh, he sealed that thing and he robed me in his righteousness. Uh, and in his sight, uh, I am already there. My uh, 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 position in Christ is already in glory. Uh, my residency is already there. Uh, my conversation is already there. Uh, but this flesh is wicked uh, and it hinders me from being there. Paul called it a body of death. Uh, and we can't see God and live because. God is holy uh, and in his presence we would just obliterate because we're not holy that pillar fire represents his holiness also represents his glory oh I'm glad we serve a glorious God a majestic God He's the God of all gods. He's the God that flung the stars out on nothing and called them by name. Uh, he's the God that in six days created everything that we know uh, and was pleased. Uh, and he made man out of the dust of the earth and breathed in man the breath of life and man became a living soul. Uh, God took nothing, uh, made everything. Uh, and before him in his throne today, uh, all the angelic beings and all the heavenly hosts uh, proclaim he's holy. Uh, and proclaim his glory and his glory shines all, all over heaven uh, he'll be the light of the city when we get to New Jerusalem Amen. say what's going to light all that his glory that fire represents his holiness and his glory but it also represents his fierceness when Jesus literally comes back at his second coming he's coming back in the fierceness of the wrath of almighty God Amen. God is angry with the wicked every day. Do not lose sight of the fact that God does love sinners, but he hates their sin. And he's angry every day that they stay in their sin. You and I ought to strive to see sinners saved, not just because we want to see our church grow, not because we just want to see folks uh, get to go to heaven. Uh, we ought to have a desire to see sinners saved because every day they say, stay lost, uh, they dishonor God. Uh, and we ought to desire to see them saved so that they can honor God with their life and with their lives. Sure. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Uh, so you'll see his person in the pillars. His holiness and His glory and His fierceness is revealed. Can I say within the pillars you'll find God's power. We used to sing that song, there's power in the blood. There's power, 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 power in the blood. But so many Christians are defeated now, we don't sing them songs anymore. Hmm? Amen. Can I say, He's so powerful, one drop of His blood will take a sinner and change him into a saint of God. Yeah. 
He's so powerful that he can reach down from heaven to the lowest pit uh, and pull up a sinner and change his life and set him on a rock, uh, put praise unto God in his lips, uh, establish his goings. Uh, only God can change a heart. Uh, only God can change a life. Uh, only God can forgive sin. Uh, only God can do the impossible. When Jesus was here, he showed that he was God. Uh, he raised the dead. He opened blinded eyes. He healed the sick uh, and all those things. But yet today, that's the only thing people want, causes people want to serve him. Oh, if God would just heal, heal my sickness, if he'd just pay my bills, eh, we ought to serve him because he's God. Amen. If he never blessed us again, he's still worthy of our praise. Because what he's already done. But can I say, he's powerful. God can speak to somebody on the other part of the world and send them to somebody that sends them to somebody that comes to us and shows us something that changes our life. Only God can do that. Uh, I was thinking the other day, can I share some of the providence of God with you? This is just God. Y'all know Brother Sammy. Now we love Brother Sammy. Y'all know what we're trying to do in the Caribbean. 19 English-speaking islands, 44 million souls. And we want to make an impact. We want to see people saved. We want to strengthen churches that are struggling. And everywhere we go, Brother Doug, they tell us we can't do it. That's all they tell us. Oh, it's been tried before. You can't do it. Well, I'm just dumb enough to believe that nothing's impossible with God. And God put it on our hearts to do it. So I just believe we need to do it. Say, preacher, how are you going to do it? I don't know. When are you going to do it? I don't know. But you're going to do it? Yeah. yeah. What makes you think you're going to do it? God. I don't need to know the answers. I just need to walk through the doors he opens. Sure. But let me share you providence of God. This is just like God. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Phil. You don't even know what I'm going to say, but it is awesome. <laughs> Can I say, about five years ago, I was online, I saw a title of a book. You know me, I'm a book nut. I said, I like the title of that book. I'm going to order it. So I ordered the book. I read the book. I sense of giving the book to a bunch of young preachers. I, I enjoyed it. So I just said, you know what? I'm going to email the author and tell him I enjoyed his book. So I did. I emailed him. So just want you to know I got your book. I enjoyed it. It was a blessing. I'm giving it to some young preachers. That's all I said. Next thing I know, the author calls me, invites me to his big conference. So I go to the conference. I mean, that was nice of him to invite me. So I go, you need to go with me sometime. He's got 250 people in his choir. Yeah. And I mean, you know, the cantatas we do at Christmas, uh, his choir's the ones that's recording all of them that we listen to. I mean, they're, they're, they got an orchestra. I mean, they're independent Baptists too. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's great. I just sat there and enjoyed the choir. Had a good time. Enjoyed the preaching. Had a good time. Huh? Invited him up here to camp meeting a few years ago. He came. He enjoyed himself. Went back to his conference. He invited me up on the platform, told him, he, he said, I don't know what to think of this guy, but I like him. I understand that. Uh, but I, I'm getting to it. This preacher, I, I call him back about three months ago, and I tell him our burden for the Caribbean. Immediately he's on board because he's doing the same thing in, in South America to Latin and, and Spanish-speaking people. And he's been told the same thing can't be done. We get to talking about the Caribbean. He said, the Caribbean's not far for us at all because he's in Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, tell him what to, what we're doing to do. And, and I asked him if he would go with me to Cayman, Grand Cayman, in September. He said, I'll go. So we're going to Cayman. So that's a blessing. Then about a month ago, he sends me a picture where he was donated a 737 jet. And I, and I know God loves him more than he loves me, but he gave him a jet. 
Well, here's the rest of the story. This is, this is blessed. A billionaire that he knows donated the jet. Billionaire's taking care of the upkeep on the jet. Where's Brother Jim? Blessing. Guess he's going to fill it up, too. Blessing. $60,000 a pop. Here's the thing. Brother Sammy went to a conference in San Diego, was flying back to Miami. On the way to Miami, I had him stop at Jacksonville. He just met with the preacher. Preacher met, with, met him at dinner for service. Brother Sammy told, me, told him what he was going to do. He, and he's telling Sammy some things. And, and Sammy said, you need to come to St. Lucia. And, and he said, all you got to do is invite me. And he said, okay, you're invited. And make a long story short. Brother Neil, last Sunday, presented to his church the need, Brother Doug, you'll shout on this, for a boat. And they asked Brother Sammy, what kind of boat do you need? He said, one to take supplies to the islands and haul about 20 people. And, and the man said, why would you want to haul 20 when you can haul 50? So the same guy that donated the plane is probably going to get you off the hook for a boat. You say, what does this have to do with anything? Because God touched my heart to read a book. I've entered into a relationship with the author, who's a great man, a great man of God, pastor of a great church. By the way, it's named Emmanuel Baptist Church. And through our friendship, and through my friendship with Brother Sammy, and get Brother Sammy there, what I'm saying is the providence of God takes two people who don't know anybody, puts them together, all of a sudden does something else, and now it looks like they're going to get involved in uh, what we're trying to do in the Caribbean as well. Uh, I'm saying God is well able to do whatever He wants to do. Some of you got lost children lost family members and you've told them and you told them and you told them but you see the Holy Ghost can do what you can't do Holy Ghost can put somebody that works next to them that's a believer Holy Ghost can put somebody at the grocery store that's checking them out as a believer Holy Ghost can give them somebody that gives them their food through the window at McDonald's as a believer uh, that can share the gospel uh, what I'm saying friend uh, you can't uh, but God can uh, and hey I'm glad uh, for the power of God Amen. he's not limited Amen. you know the only thing that limits God our lack of faith I find the power of God in the pillar. Can I say there's protection in the pillar? Amen. Thank God for his protection. He protected Israel at the Red Sea, and any time they needed protected, he protected. Matter of fact, when he literally comes back, he's coming back to stop the world from annihilating Israel. He is a protecting God. Right. You and I that are saved, that are blood washed, that are bought by the uh, uh, wonderful blood of Christ, uh, we're in his hand, his hand's in the Father's hand. There's nothing that can get to you unless God allowed it. The reason y'all weren't in that accident, God was protecting you. Hmm. there's protection in the pillar can I say this there are paths in the pillar he led them in the way can I say those paths are paths of faith now you can choose to follow the ways of God right. or you can reject them yep. there's blessing and obedience there's chastening and disobedience. But can I say, he gives us paths, and it doesn't matter how big or how little or what the obstacles are. God, you want me to walk up that mountain? If that's the way he's leading, walk. He'll give you the strength, or he'll remove your mountain. If I put my trust in Baptist preachers to get any work done in the Caribbean, well, there's nothing to get done. But I know God. And God cares about those people. Down there in Grenada, I wish you all had been with us. Phil, you'd ran two laps down there. You see folks who are sold out to voodoo and witchcraft and demonism walking out and trust Christ that'll change your life 
See, 40 of them do it because they do backflips. God is able. And can I say, it takes us walking in paths of faith. It takes us walking in paths that are formidable. God never leads you anywhere that He can't take care of you. And He never leads you anywhere because He's bored. That great 23rd Psalm says, He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. God never leads you anywhere because of you. God leads you somewhere because you've been bought with a price. Your life is no longer your own. It's His. Uh, and He leads you somewhere for His name's sake. You go through what you go through that He can get glory out of your name. Hmm? It's all about Him. Amen. Too many times we get the pooch mouth. Oh, God's forgot me over here. No, God's got you right where He wants you. What can I say? God leads you sometimes to where you need to be so you can get closer to God. But can I say, sometimes God has you where He has you and it has nothing to do with you. It's because He wants to impact somebody else's life and He's choosing to use you to do it. Amen. Don't fight the path. It's a formidable path. He has formed it for a purpose. Just keep walking with Him. He leads us in paths of faith, paths that, paths are, that are formidable. But also, every path is toward the future. But Doug wrote a book about time and eternity. Everything is for our time right now, but everything that we do for God right now impacts eternity. It's for the future. Amen. So just keep walking in the paths where he leads me. The old hymn writer, where he leads me, I will follow. God help us. And then let me say this lastly. Talk about what's in the pillars. There's a pardon in the pillars. Amen. Amen. Yeah. No, none of them deserved to follow him. Can I say none of them had worshipped him? All they knew is what was handed down to them for four centuries. Right. They'd been in bondage 400 years. And God delivered them not because of what they were doing, but because of the promise he made to Abraham. And so we find he delivers them. You know what happens when you get delivered? You get pardoned. The Lord said through Isaiah, Isaiah 1, 18, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord, Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. I'm glad that God seeks to save sinners. Jeremiah 33, 8, he said, And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed against me. Can I say God is a forgiving God? He forgives us of all of our sins. He washes us from all our sins. And God, when he pardons you, he remembers your sin no more. I bless his holy name. said, All that say this. The cloud, the pillar that's a cloud, ought to be evidenced in our daily lives by the leading of the Holy Spirit. People ought to know that God's presence is around when they see us. Amen. It may be foggy to them, they may not understand it, but they ought to know that we're being led by something different than they are. And can I say that it ought to be evidenced with the fire in the sanctuary. If we're led by the cloud all week long, when we come to the sanctuary, there ought to be a fire. Amen. His holiness, yeah. His glory ought to be demonstrated in our midst. Hmm? You can always tell folks who have worshipped before they get here. And you can tell folks who don't. Let me say this. What we need to do is not pray for a pillar. We need to get in the pillar. Both of them are pictures of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was given to us to lead us and guide us into all truth and to point us to Christ, to illuminate the Scriptures. 
bring us that peace that passes the understanding. But too many times we try to operate outside the workings of God. We just need to get in the pillar. We just need to get where God's at. And everything will be all right. Let me ask you this this morning. Are you following God? Is God's presence what is leading you? Is God's presence what whets your appetite? So I get to thinking about God, and then I want to get in the Word and learn more about Him, see more about Him. I want to talk to Him more. I want to spend more time with Him. Is the Lord leading you? Is His presence in your life? When was the last time you worshipped Him? Amen. Maybe you're here today, and you can't worship Him because you've got some sin in your life. First John 1, 9 is still in the book. We'll confess it, forsake it, you'll forget it. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. You're willing to come, get me right this morning so you can follow the pillar, so you can get in the pillar. Maybe here today and you're not saved. God's been dealing with you. You need to get saved. Why don't today you come get saved? Today's the day of salvation. Amen. Why don't you come? We'll take a Bible, show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. You can have the, that peace of God and peace with God. There's nothing like it. Hmm? You can know what it really is to worship God. You can get in the pillar. I see a lot of folks complaining. I see a lot of folks having excuses why they can't. I just like hanging around that crowd that gets in the pillar. Amen. And where he leadeth, I'll follow. I wonder. You willing to trust him? You willing to sell out to him? You willing to put him first today? Or are you just going to be satisfied with a mundane Christian life? I want his leading. I want to be around him all the time. The Bible says, draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Will you draw nigh today? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Brother Clint comes. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do love you. There was something about those pillars that set your people apart from everybody on the face of the earth. God, help us just get in the pillar. Help us, Lord, just be where you are. Lord, I pray <clears throat> the world will take note we've been with Jesus. Now, God, meet every need of every heart in this invitation. God, I know you came seeking to save that which was lost. And God, it's your will, none should perish, but all should come to repentance. God, if there's somebody here today unsaved, I pray the Holy Ghost speak to them. God, I pray they come trust Christ. God, that child of God that's ashamed because they haven't followed you, help them to get right today. God, bless now in this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Turn around. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.